you raise a ton of capital here. Quite a number of people in uh, communications and aerospace industries remain skeptical about the money-making potential of a space-based internet network, which is what you're looking to do with OneWeb. What would you say to them? Well, I'd say that, that uh, there's a huge potential for us. We're really changing the dynamics of, uh, and the economics of space. We're mass assembling uh, satellites, so our satellites are costing us about a million dollars each. Uh, and we're able to produce one a day, and by the end of the year we'll be able to produce two a day. That's very different than the 250 million sort of uh, very custom-built satellites that, that GEOs uh, were, uh, were doing before. And we have, uh, we're going to broaden the use case as a satellite because you're going to just uh, use our service, you're going to have to look up and see us. You don't have to point to the horizon. And we have all the spectrum that all the GEO satellites have all over the world. And with the advantage that we are, our, our satellites are zipping over the Earth at 27,000 kilometers per hour, and uh, we're much closer. So there's lower latency, and there's coverage everywhere. It, it's pretty amazing when you talk about producing two satellites a day, and I think the number is what, about a million dollars per satellite to produce. The fact that they're in low Earth orbit, they're smaller. This is really, in many ways, a, a manufacturing uh, marvel here, because usually it's hundreds of millions of dollars and it can take years to make satellites. How are you able to do it and do it so cheaply, so quickly? So we, we've, we, we've done a joint venture with Airbus uh, and, and we have a factory uh, at Cape Canaveral uh, and we've really set up a supply chain and we're using the same satellite over and over again uh, to populate our system. And, you know, we're going to produce 650 for the first uh, layer of capacity, uh, which will be for global coverage. Uh, but we'll go all the way up to 2,000, and our like, like you know all the electronics that you see, you know the iPhone 10 being the, better than the iPhone 5. What you're going to see is our second generation will be better than our first generation, and so the, the most Adrian, important asset that we that we have is is, uh, is our spectrum. Here's my question: Is how are the economics going to work to be able to cover all kinds of rural areas, areas that right now you have difficulty getting coverage? How much are you going to have to charge to that person? Will it be monthly, some other way? When a lot of people are already going to have their own cellular or 5G coverage and might not want to get an extra subscription to satellite to to cover blank spots, how many people do you have to get? How much do you have to charge? So, so we're going to work first on the, the, the verticals where there are people right now willing to pay a lot uh, in airplanes and on boats. Uh, and then we're also working with partners, and those partners are governments, and they're also terrestrial mobile operators that want to extend their networks. Uh, and then when, when we think about what we're trying to do as our social mission, which is to connect everyone, I mean, the best sort of line about the company is one web, one world. We want everybody to be connected. But thinking about that, we're going to go and focus on schools. And schools are places where you have lots of kids together uh, so they can afford our antenna. But we need to work with governments. Uh, and, uh, and because it's not just a matter of providing the connectivity, you have to make sure that they have uh, the ability to manage, to provision, uh, to make sure they have the right content. And so, you know, it's working with governments and then bringing the cost down of our user terminals so we can go even beyond that.